Today we're going to be talking about how to get your house sold in a down market. So we're doing it ourselves. This is my house and this is our home. My, this studio is in our living room next to the fireplace. And I know that because only about 30% of all homes that are listed are actually selling that you have to follow the formula. What that means is that you can't go halfway on anything, whether it's the staging, repair, what have you. Because there's only two types of buyers right now. There's the types of buyers that are either looking for a screaming deal on a fixer-upper, or they're looking for a turnkey home where they can move into the house and there's nothing to do. Oh, I guess I don't need these. So that's what they're looking for. And if you are somewhere in between, I call it grandma's house. So grandma's house is clean and tidy and everything is in beautiful shape, but it's really dated. The carpets are dated in great shape and clean, but dated. The colors are dated, but it's in great shape. That's where you don't want to be. Because if you have grandma's house, it's something in between those two. And it's really tough to find a buyer because grandma's house, because it's so clean and in such good shape, is going for almost as much as a turnkey home. So you look at grandma's house and you're thinking, oh my gosh, there's forty, fifty, eighty thousand dollars I gotta do to update it. I mean it's clean and in great shape and well taken care of and it's livable. But it still needs these renovations if I'm if I'm gonna update it. So that's not a great place to be. Those ones are really tough to sell right now. And uh, even in a, in a hotter market, that's not the best place for you to be, but they will sell. Right now, not so much. So you've got to make a decision. If you look around your home and you realize that there's tons of work that has to be done, there's nicks and scratches and scrapes and hasn't been updated in the last decade, well, then you know you've got to do something or you've got to do nothing. If you do nothing, it's got to be priced for that. It's got to be priced with realistic expectations that, geez, you know, this is easily $50,000 if I'm going to do the cupboards and the countertops and the floors and the paint and, oh my God, it never stops. So understand that and and not um, the do-it-yourselfer where you're thinking, oh, well, I'm just going to factor in the material costs. So I'm only going to drop it by $20,000 because that's the material costs. And then it's a do-it-yourselfer that'll buy the house. If that's your thought pattern, um, it's not going to be very successful right now because the do-it-yourselfer also wants to have his or her time paid for. So that means if they have to get more than just the material cost out of the effort. Otherwise, why do it? There's there's really not a point. So you got to be Price to a, uh, a point where it's worth their time, the hassle factor, I call it. And if you're not factoring in the hassle factor and assigning a dollar amount to that, well, it's it just doesn't make a lot of sense for savvy buyers. And buyers are so smart now. Um, even ones that, uh, I shouldn't say it quite like that, but um, buyers are either using a professional realtor, getting professional advice on what works and what doesn't work, what is a good investment in a home and what isn't, or they are on realtor.ca like mad looking and looking and looking and looking. Now they don't have access to the sold properties on there, at least not yet. There's talk that that might happen. Um, But what they do have is a really good sense of bang for the buck. What's available out there. Just like being on Kijiji and looking, 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 and getting a a sort of a sense of bang for the buck. Uh, Those people know that they can get a better deal down the street. So your choices are either do nothing, but price accordingly, or do it all and price accordingly. If you do it all, but you do it smart, you spend the smart money, not the dumb money, you should have an ROI, return on investment. It's all about if I, every dollar I put in, I get at least a dollar fifty back or more. Unfortunately, people make often make a lot of decisions where they put a dollar in and they only get a dollar out, which is actually a loss. Or they put in a dollar in and, oh gosh, they only get 20 cents out, which is in the case of, say, an acreage. If you have an outbuilding, um, like a big shop, well, that's awesome. And it's a great selling feature. 
people like to have a great big shop, but from an appraiser's point of view, it is just not uh, something that adds value to the property. And from a market value point of view, you can spend $100,000 on a really great shop and only be able to get maybe fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 back. So that's an $80,000 loss. Not great. Great for the buyer, though. If you see a brand new outbuilding on an acreage and, and the acreage is priced the same as one without the outbuilding, well, hey, it's a free outbuilding, more or less. And I've done quite a few deals just like that, where uh, the property is basically land value, a real crappy house on it, but full of outbuildings. Great. So they build a brand new house on there and out the, all the outbuildings were free. Bonus. Anyway, if you need any more advice on uh, how to get your house sold in this market, or really in any market, you can either give me a call at 403-463-4313, or if you like, um, if you don't want to talk to me, that's fine. I'll provide you with a copy of my new book, The Home Seller's Bible for Homeowners, Agents, and Investors. That's The Home Seller's Bible for Homeowners, Agents, and Investors. It is a compilation of myself and 10 other industry experts. So it's not just all me. I have the lawyer, the flooring person, the roofing person, social media expert, I mean, you name it, mortgage broker, rent to own, oh my goodness, surveyor. I have it all in this book. 280, it's a great reference guide and it's actually an enjoyable read. People actually read the darn thing. Um, so it's, it's more interesting than a dictionary apparently, which is good, um, but it has the tips and tricks that tell the truth the truth of how to sell it, whether you want to sell on your own, which is perfectly fine, or if you want to have a professional realtor, this book helps you keep them accountable. So you know what to expect and you know where they're falling a little bit short. Either way, the Home Seller's Bible for homeowners, agents, and investors available on amazon.com, amazon.ca, and actually all around the world on whatever their local Amazon address is. And also, for anybody that meets with me, I'll give you a paper copy for free. If we're talking about real estate, I'll, it's, it's my business card now, is that book. Or uh, I will simply email you a free PDF copy of the Home Seller's Bible for homeowners, agents, and investors. Thanks for tuning in. Um, please leave your comments below. Let me know if you agree, disagree, if there's any other questions, if you are interested in hearing about something that I didn't cover. Just let me know and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Mark Meinke, Remax Signature Properties, Okotoks. Thanks so much. Take care.